Hey y'all, welcome to the Penny Pinching Prepper channel. I'm the Penny Pinching Prepper. If you're new to this channel, I appreciate you showing up. And if you like what you see, do me a favor, get down in there, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. For you those who have been around for a minute, you guys, uh, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, if you like the video anyways. Um, if you have any questions or just want to add something, be sure to get down there in the comment section below. Um, I do like answering comments and uh, I definitely always answer them. Uh, guys, today I, I got another fire starter for you. Um, this one's a little bit fun, a little bit interesting, but uh, I'm calling it the afterburner. <clears throat> and uh, when it's all done, this is what it's going to look like. Yeah, it's a pretty easy project. Goes by pretty quick. So let's uh, let's get into it, guys. Um, so what you're going to need to start off with is a 15-minute road flare. All right, pop the cap off, take it completely off. All right, you'll need a hacksaw. All right. Hacksaw is important. Uh, don't try to do it with a knife or a regular saw. Find yourself a hacksaw. Um, it, it'll keep it from messing the stuff that burns inside from falling out. All right. You'll need some cotton balls, a hot glue gun. All right. And, uh, I'm using beeswax for this project you really can use any type of wax but I'm still going to recommend the beeswax and uh, some petroleum jelly and what you'll need to do is get a couple of tin cans you know just your normal size tin can you know, something like this all right stick it inside of a pot put some water in it get the beeswax and the petroleum jelly melted down all right and uh, once it's melted down then you can you know you can prep your project get it all ready to go you also need a, a measuring tape and uh, if I didn't mention it which I think I did but some cotton balls okay all right, so give me one second. I'm gonna give you a better view so you can see what I'm doing here, and we're gonna go through this project real fast. Oh, and if I forgot to mention, get yourself some parchment paper or some uh, wax paper, wrap it around a piece of cardboard or a board, as you can kind of see over here to the side. I, I have that done up already. All right, so. You're going to start out by getting your measuring tape. These things measure at about nine inches long. Okay. So it's going to give you about nine of them. Or it will give you nine of them. But you're going to want to just mark them out at one inch increments. Just take your hacksaw, mark it up with your one inch line. Give a little slice there so you can see the line. See the little line there. All right. You'll do that. All the way down the thing, get nine of them all ready to go with just the lines, and we'll get back to you in a second. Alright, as you can see now, we got them all marked out there. It's just faster if you mark them out first and then go through and cut them. Guys, take your time cutting it because you don't want the, the filler on the inside to spill out. So just go ahead and take your time. Don't have to go real fast. And, uh... Any of the dust that it makes, I recommend holding on to, all right? You know, save it, put it in a glass jar or something. Because you never know when this type of a burnable might come in handy with a later on project. So you just get through it. Try to get down as low as you can before you try to rotate it to finish it off. And then really take your time, all right? Because you don't want to mess up the, the nice smooth surface that the hacksaw is going to create for you. And you'll see 
see what I mean by a nice smooth surface. All right, let's see if we can get that into view for you. Nice smooth surface. As you can see, I even went a little bit too fast. As you can see right here, the yellow showing, that means that it was starting to fall apart and come out, all right? So put that aside, finish up the rest of them, and I'll get right back with you. All right, folks, so once you get it all done, you know, you should just have a, a bunch of little one inch blocks like that they don't need to be perfect they can vary in size a little bit and it's just going to change the burn time a little bit that's all um so you'll get your cotton balls you'll need nine of them and uh if you're wondering why i call them the afterburner it's because you get an initial burn that's semi-hot and then you get an afterburn on these things that are really hot so these things are great for uh uh, material that might be a little damp that needs to dry off a little bit before it'll get a good burn going and these things will help you do that <clears throat> so all you're going to do is take your cotton ball and on a smooth edge you're just going to drop some hot glued right down in the middle all right just a little drop all right and then the long ways you'll smash it down on top real good so that it sticks really nice and well okay so once you get all those get back to me and I'll get back to you when I get all mine done all right so when you get all done you should have your nice little uh, Santa Claus topped head there you know your little ball on the top of the red hat all right however you want to look at it so the next thing you're going to do is you really want to protect the bottom, all right? You see here, oh, went the wrong way, how a little bit wanted to come falling out the bottom. So we want to protect it, and we're going to do that by dipping it right into the beeswax here, all right? Just bring it out and set it down, okay? Now you want to do that to all of them, of course, and I'll get back with you in a moment. One other thing, make sure that you're careful not to get beeswax on the cotton ball, okay? You want this to be able to start up and burn as easy as possible, which means fluffing the, the material at some point, especially if you're trying to do it with a, a ferro rod. So you're going to want to be able to fluff it out. So. Uh, don't get any beeswax on the cotton ball and if you want to be a little bit more safe you can go back and dip it a second time I'm gonna do that real fast and we'll finish up on the project all right so for the next part of this project what you're gonna to want to do is you're actually gonna to want to dip half the cotton ball in the petroleum jelly all right only half of it Pull it out, give it a little shake, and then kind of smash it down to where it wants to, the petroleum jelly wants to absorb into the rest of the cotton ball. Alright, and then just kind of peel it back a little bit with your hand, give it a little smash down. Alright. And I might have went just a little too light on the petroleum jelly for that one, but no big deal. So let me finish these up and get back to you. Okay, so once you get them smashed down and the petroleum jelly is in there and you're able to get through them all, take some time and cool them down. Stick them in front of an air conditioning unit, throw them in the freezer. If it's cold enough outside, just take them outside. And if you're uh, curious why I use the petroleum jelly um, first on the cotton balls, it's because the petroleum jelly will never get as hard as the beeswax or the other wax will, and you want to be able to easily fluff it in case you have to use your ferro rod, okay? Uh, the beeswax makes it really hard, or regular wax even makes it very hard to fluff the cotton ball, okay? So now what you're going to do next is go ahead and dip them back into the beeswax getting them fully covered so it's covered from top to bottom now with beeswax 
All right, and that petroleum jelly will also keep the beeswax from soaking into the cotton ball uh, at all, okay? So just go through and, and finish them off. And get them all done like that. And once again, if you want to do a second coat, you can. All right, folks. Let's see if we can't get this thing started. Now, I am a little rusty with my ferro rod, so you might have to bear with me. We'll see. But all you want to do is peel back the beeswax, all right? Get to that cotton inside and pull it up. And then once you got it, you can go ahead and just keep pulling it until you get a nice healthy amount pulled up, okay? Then you'll want to fluff it out to the side. Because when you fluff it out to the side, you're able to get that ferro rod down on it better. And get that good amount of surface space to be able to do it. So, anyways, bear with me. Let's see what we can do here. So, try to get it straight up and down on it. Yeah, I told you I was rusty. Oh, I think I'm using the wrong side. I think I was just using the wrong angle. There we go. So, now you'll watch, it'll have an initial burn on it, and it'll, it'll, it'll last for a little while. It, it has a good initial burn on it, but you'll see after a while that it gets a lot better. So just bear with it. Um, I'm not great at fast forwarding things, so you're gonna see it in real time. Uh, unfortunately, you probably would rather see it in fast forward, but just bear with it or fast forward it yourself to see what it looks like once it really gets going. That's up to you. But as I'm sitting here waiting for it to burn, guys, if you like the project, you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and for you new people that might not be subscribed, if uh, this interests you, do me a favor and subscribe. It would be really appreciated. It is a little windy outside today, but as you can see, even in the wind, it continues to burn. I want it to blow out though. We want it to get down there and catch the way it's supposed to. So this is the initial burn and then you'll get the afterburn. Which uh, for those of you who are familiar with jets, you know what that means. And if you're not, that's just where they dump fuel directly on the flame and you get a much faster, hotter burn and allows the, uh, the jet to go faster. Looks like we're getting ready to start up here any second now. You can see a little bit of red starting in that flame. You can see it's getting a little bigger. And here 
comes the afterburn. And it is really windy out here today, guys. So you can see, even in high winds, this thing actually works pretty darn good. Just imagine if there wasn't so much wind. It would really get things burning. Dry off the materials real well. Whatever uh, you know, dampness is in the the twigs and the little branches that you start your fire with, it dry it right up, and definitely get a fire going. get about three minutes total uh, including the initial burn and after burn you get somewhere around three minutes per one I'm sure you guys are all watching the clock by now <laughs> but as you can see it definitely does what it's called it has the after burn <laughs> so that, that afterburn is burning at least three times hotter than the initial burn, probably closer to four or five. It gets really, really hot. And uh, the more heat there is, the more it will dry your material out. And then it, you know comes down to a little fizzle it'll burn like that for a little while but at the end of the day that's what it is so guys if you like what you see you know what to do and uh, always remember God's good and God bless talk at you later <laughs>